How to build the Blackgate Twin Steam Engine, this is part 4, marking out and cutting the base to size. The engine is currently loosely assembled on the bench, or at least it was, now it's been pulled apart, and I did notice there that one of the trunnion pins is still a little bit on the tight side, that's something I need to look at. But in this episode, I just need to give the base the treatment that it requires. And this starts by painting the bottom of the base with my marking out blue that was sent to me by a man called Norman. And the more I use this stuff, the more I wonder how I've done without it for so many years. As I've got older, my eyesight is definitely not as good as it used to be. The first thing I need is an optical enhancement device, also known as a pair of glasses. But this stuff makes it much easier to see any scribed lines. In the workshop, I generally wear a headset magnifier as well, and that makes it easier too. Well, at least until it appears in the video by accident. This marking out blue, by the way, it dries very quickly indeed. All you have to do is blow at it and it dries. And now it is dry, I can start the marking out process. The first part of the job was to find the centre position, then make a mark three quarters of an inch away from the centre position at each side, and I need to do this on both of the standards and draw a line between the two, but not like this. The bases of both of these standards need to be identical. And the part of the base at the front is already square, so I'm using that as a datum. And by marking the lines using a set square, the lines are parallel with each other. I find the marking out process very difficult. Why should I find it difficult? Well, the parts don't keep still, and I don't have enough hands. One hand for the ruler, one hand for the scriber. So which hand do I use to hold the component still and stop it moving about over the surface of the bench? So just before Christmas, I bought two bench vices from a seller on the auction site we all know and love. The Buy Now auction listing definitely said next day dispatch. It's now the 7th of January and I haven't got them yet. But anyway, I managed to mark out these bases very well. So now it's over to the bandsaw to trim them to the right size or should I say, to trim them slightly above the right size. In this video, it looks like I'm holding the part at a very odd angle, and indeed I am, because the blade is blunt, and I don't want it to wander anywhere near the line. In this clip, you can see it more clearly. I'm angling the blade so that it cuts away from the line towards me. Assuming that you have a bandsaw, if the blade doesn't cut in a straight line, it's time to change it, because usually it's because it's blunt. The main reason for not wanting to go anywhere near the line is because I'm now using my 1 inch belt sander to trim the part to the line itself. With a bit of care and practice, using a 1 inch belt sander like this you can get great results and accurate results. Not only does the part end up being the correct shape, it's also got a good finish. But a word of warning, don't get carried away. Two things are going to happen, if you get carried away you'll remove too much metal and you'll go beyond the line and then the job's spoilt. And don't forget, because of the friction generated by the sanding belt, the part is going to get hot. It's a good idea to wear gloves when doing this, but I've already explained many times why I don't wear gloves in the workshop. In every one of my videos I'm showing how I do the job, how you do the job is entirely up to yourself. But eye protection and a breathing mask is recommended for jobs like this. It's common sense, really. First of all, I removed the rough edges from the underside of the base, and now I'm doing the top surface, which is still going to be a bit rough, because it is, after all, a casting. And that's a good thing. I want it to look like a casting. If you look carefully, you will see that the base tapers slightly, but this is not a problem. I don't need to level this off, because the base itself will be threaded. Here are two 530 seconds of an inch diameter holes that I've drilled in the first of the standards. Now I need to drill two more holes in the second standard in exactly the same position. So the easiest way to do this is to hold the parts together and use a scriber to mark the hole position. Then it's back over to the drilling machine and as always I'm using a centre drill. I've made a little spot on the mark where I think it should be. Checked it with the ruler, it's OK, so now I can go all the way through. And to save moving the position I just fitted a twist drill into the chuck and went straight through with that. And as I've just mentioned, this is a 530 seconds of an inch diameter twist drill, which is tapping size for 2BA. If you're watching carefully, you will notice that the drill grabbed just as it was about to go through the hole. A quick double check with the ruler for the positions of the holes. And once again, centre drill first, followed by twist drill, gives me hole number two. 
or is it hole number four because this is the second standard? Here's a shot of the engine loosely reassembled and if you notice it looks slightly different because I've plugged up the holes in the top part of the valve chamber and I've also squared off the edges of the port blocks using a milling cutter in the milling machine. I will show you that in great detail in the next video. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.